it's my pleasure to welcome here at the Polish and Slavic Federal Credit Union in Greenpoint, New York, Mr. Rodney Hood, who's the chairman of the board of the National Credit Union Administration. Welcome to Greenpoint. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here today. So did you have a chance to already uh, look at the neighborhood? I have toured the neighborhood <laughs> when I got in earlier this morning and was able to see the beautiful neighborhood, the businesses that are thriving. And what I really love is the sense of community. Oh, yes. And I'm hoping that you will have a chance to experience that community even more today. Yes, throughout today's festivities, I'm hoping to experience it more by meeting some of the members and volunteers here at the Polish Slavic Federal Credit Union. But I want to start with a different question. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, what's your first memory associated with money or managing money? I think my first memory is as a youngster, probably when I was in grade school with my sort of first job after school, was learning the importance of getting into the habit of not only saving money, but paying yourself first. So no matter what you do when you're earning, whether you are 13 years old with a paper route or 33 year olds as you build your career, the important thing is learning the basics of paying yourself first, living below your means and recognizing the difference between something you want and something you need. And that's uh, awesome that you said that. These are the first couple of valuable lessons from today's interview. Um, but I wanted to ask that because this institution, Polish and Slavic Federal Credit Union, what they do is that they actually teach children how to manage their money, which I think is it's important. part of their success. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest part uh, of the success of this institution? I think the biggest part of the success of this institution is that they have surrounded themselves with wonderful leaders who all have a tie to Poland, who really want to make sure that the citizens of Poland, people who are living here today, that they're having access to opportunities to have checking accounts, savings accounts, loans. They're making sure that they are equipped with the resources so their families can grow and thrive and prosper. This credit union looks at the relationship of the members, but also they look at everyone as an opportunity to invest in. They're investing in the community, not just with the loans and products, but they're giving away a lot, a lot of money to charity. I'm especially pleased when we talk about children and investments. This credit union, I understand, has invested almost $5 million over the past 19 years and giving opportunities to children to get educated in college. That's almost 4,300 students have had access to college. So this institution, what they're doing well is investing and putting its money where its mouth is. And I want to look at three factors and I would like you to say how does it compare to other credit unions or how does it look like uh, in terms of the whole United States. Okay. The first thing, this credit union will uh, soon reach 100,000 members. Yes. That's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> That is a lot, and I think that wonder, that's wonderful, and it shows that this credit union is meeting a need. It's showing that they are doing marketing and outreach, but it also means that those members of the credit unions are telling other members of their family that they too should be a part of it. So yes, this credit union has close to 100,000 members, and in the broad network of credit unions that I oversee, so I oversee about 5,300 credit unions, and around the United States, we have almost 120 million members of credit unions. So I'm pleased that this credit union has a large percentage of that population. And the assets, $2 billion. $2 so billion is sizable. Yeah. It compares favorably. So the asset size of the Polish and Slavic credit union, of course, makes it one of the largest credit unions of the 5,300 that I oversee. Um, Overall, though, as an industry, credit unions now have assets of $1.5 trillion. So again, because this institution is $2 billion, they comprise a significant uh, portion of the overall credit union asset size. And given what I'm hearing, they're going to continue to grow. And also the third factor, ethnicity, which mm -hmm. is very important to our community. Mm -hmm. um, how important of a factor is that in growing a credit union like this? Well, I think it's important here because this is the only credit union in the United States that's based on ethnic identity. The Polish Slavic Federal Credit Union is the only credit union that has this membership component. So it's important. I think what's critically important is that it helps preserve the culture of folks who may no longer live in Poland but are here but still want to have that tie and that fidelity to where they were born and reared and nurtured. So this credit union, I think, unlike others, has the ability to continue growing and building a future for that next generation of Polish Americans who want access to affordable financial products. Today's economy is pretty good. Mm -hmm. We see that. And uh, how, do, how do credit unions perform an economy like this? What I mean 
Why is it better to open an account here at a credit union? It is better to open a credit union, a, a credit union account for a number of reasons. The one thing that I'm proud of is the fact that I am overseeing the nation's credit union system and I'm preparing a regulatory framework where regulation is effective but not excessive. So because I'm hoping to have an opportunity to reduce the regulatory burden for credit unions like Polish and Slavic, it means that money that they would have been spending on compliance costs and regulations that are outdated, they can now use those funds for something else. They can now use the funds that they're saving from regulation to invest in their members. What does that mean? It means that the members of the Polish Slavic Credit Union are going to get favorable interest rates. Another thing that's favorable is the fact that once you're a part of a credit union, you are a member owner of the institution. It means that here, these folks, they're not called customers, they are member owners. When they invest in their deposits, they have a voting and ownership share in the credit union. And how does Polish Slavic reward them? It means that they're going to pay lower interest rates on their products around loans, and they're going to receive higher interest rates on their deposits. So that means that it's a win-win, and credit unions are able to do that because they're not-for-profit, member-owned cooperatives. So that's the beauty. Which is your specialty as well. Which is our specialty, yes. <laughs> uh, when you were appointed, you said that you plan on modernizing credit unions. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a little bit more also about that? Yes, when I was appointed, it was just hard to believe, but it was April 8th, so I've just finished roughly my fifth month. And how do you remember that day also? Oh, it was just, <laughs> it, was, it was, that's the first day, because that's the day it all began, when I was able to take the oath and sort of sit in my office and begin implementing some of the policies that we're talking about today. But when we talk about my desire to modernize the credit union system, it is recognizing that credit unions have been around for nearly a century in the United States. But it's time to now look at how do we work with the next generation, the millennials. I want us to have a credit union system that continues to, to serve the members, but let's do it with innovation. Let's look at fintech. A lot of today's individuals, they may want to use their, their phones to do bill paying. They may want to be able to check their account balances on their iPhones. How do I create a framework where we can embrace financial technology and tools that will really meet the needs of today's consumer and the manner that he or she wants their needs to be met. So do expect me to, you're gonna see a lot more coming from my office around innovation. In fact, I will be creating a new office of innovation and access within the National Credit Union Administration in the next few months. We're researching now, we're developing out our plan, but in the few months soon, you will see this whole innovation tool that we're gonna be announcing to the industry so they will know that, hey, the agency understands the importance of FinTech. We don't wanna hamper the credit union's abilities to modernize with the times, so more to come. But right now, I just want credit unions like Polish Slavic to know, use FinTech. Good, we remember that. <laughs> Another topic with regards to that is cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. That's a threat uh, in a way that uh, we are we have more control through the electronics, but also we're afraid of losing some control exactly. at the same time. So how are you going to address that? That is a big issue. In fact, when I often talk around the United States, Monica, I talk about that the one thing that keeps me up at night is cybersecurity. Cybersecurity, you all, it's, it's something that could really topple the American economy or, in fact, the worldwide economy. I care about this issue so passionately that I created an opportunity for a person at my agency to have a new role as the senior advisor to the chairman, that's me, for cybersecurity, looking at what are the risks, what are the systemic issues, what are the things that we need to do as an agency to be prepared for cybersecurity attacks, but also this person, whose name is Johnny Davis, will be working externally as well to make sure the credit unions know about tools and trends and things like that so they can be uh, better prepared and very, better guarded. The sad thing is you can never over prepare for cybersecurity attacks if there's anything you know with that reason recent bank that had a cybersecurity attack that almost touched 100 million folks. So even the largest institutions are vulnerable. We just have to make sure that we are staying abreast and that we are investing in tools and technologies to, again, prevent cybersecurity attacks.
Good to hear that. And uh, kind of the last question on this topic, uh, we talked a little bit about today's economy. We mm -hmm. say it's good. It's good. Uh, how it's are you looking in the future? Hopeful? Are you afraid of the recent news that there is some recession I tend uh, coming? To, <laughs> hi, Monica. I tend to be uh, a regulator and a person who looks at the glass as half full at all times. I believe that the economic indicators that I'm seeing, I'm seeing the fact that the employment rate for the American society is better than it's ever been. When we look at unemployment now in communities of color, the unemployment rate for communities of color is lower than it's been in my lifetime. That's lower than it's been in almost 50 years. I look at the fact that consumers are spending. I look at the fact that our 117 or 120 million or so credit union members, 120 million it is, that those folks are getting loans for cars and homes. We still see folks that are buying in this low interest rate environment. They're continuing to stimulate the economy. We're continuing to see a demand for small businesses business growth. A lot of the jobs that are being created is because small businesses feel empowered to invest in themselves and their businesses. So I really believe that it's a bright future and one that I'm going to continue to empower credit unions like Polish and Slavic to serve their members. We're glad to hear that. And today you're here to take part uh, in the opening of the exhibition Fighting and Suffering, Polish Citizen During uh, Second World War. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention that, you know, that some of the members of these institutions were actually fighting during the Second World War. And one of the oldest uh, Warsaw Uprisers is the member still and comes to this institution very regularly. Oh my, I hope to see him today. Well, we would like you to meet some of them. Um, what does it mean for you to be here on this special occasion, the 80th anniversary of the uh, Second World War? It, for me, is indeed an honor and a privilege to be here today because we in America, we have Poland to thank for being such a great strategic ally, a great strategic partner with the United States. The fact that we all have shared values in humanity, shared values in wanting to make a difference. The fact that we also have a shared hero, Thaddeus Kosciuszko, who really helped fight here in the Battle of Saratoga and which really helped us during the Revolutionary War. So we have that shared spirit, we have that shared bond, and I'm here today because one, I value what Polish Slavic Federal Credit Union has been doing, but also as a representative of the U.S. government, I, along with Vice President Mike Pence, who will be celebrating this occasion in Poland, I'm delighted to be a part of celebrating with you all here domestically. But again, this administration certainly values its relationship with Poland, and I'm happy to be an ambassador for that cause today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your time. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you. You will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.